Scientists at the Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory in California produced a nuclear fusion reaction resulting in a net energy gain, a massive breakthrough in a decades-long journey to unleash an infinite source of clean energy that could help end dependence on fossil fuels. Mm. Principal experimental phys physicist that worked on the project, Alex Zilstra, is here with us to discuss. Welcome, Alex. Good morning. Happy to be with you. So for those of us who are not experimental physicists, why is this such a big deal? Yeah, so we've been working on fusion literally for decades at, at this point, and we always have to put some energy in to, to get the fusion going. And now for the first time, the amount of fusion energy produced is, is more than what we put in. And so it's sort of a, um, a proof of concept that you can actually get energy out of fusion, which is why this is so exciting. So, so walk us through a little bit more uh, in you know science garb <laughs> jargon. What uh, what what was the process to get that going? Yeah, so fusion is literally the uh, energy source of the stars. So our sun um, combines hydrogen into helium through fusion, which is where it, its energy comes from. And so we're using a giant laser, the largest laser in the world, called the National Ignition Facility to compress and heat the fusion fuel until it is literally at conditions like in the center of the sun in, in terms of the pressure and so on. Um, but it's uh, it's extremely tiny. So we compress the fuel until it is uh, smaller than the width of a human hair. And, um, and then the fusion burn is extremely rapid. Uh, but for a very brief moment and a very brief volume, we have uh, literally a little star on Earth. So what does the timeline look like, or can you anticipate what it looks like for application of this science to actually creating energy? Yeah, so this is basically a scientific proof of concept that it can be done. Um, I like to compare it to the Wright brothers plane, uh, which flew for about 100 feet, um, and is a great proof of principle, but that's not very useful. It, it, it takes a long time still, and a lot of effort to develop the technology engineering to take it from that to something like a uh, 747. And so that's sort of how you can think about fusion. We, we've shown that it's possible, but still a lot of uh, perseverance and, um, and work to be done to make it a commercial reality. Hmm. And is this, would it be, you know, the kind of clean energy that people have been hoping would emerge that would enable folks to get away from fossil fuels, um, you know, coal, uh, drilling, those kinds of things? Exactly. Yeah. The idea is that it's safe, it's clean, um, it's effective, and uh, hopefully can provide a, a significant source of our power in the future. Mm. Are, there any, are there any downsides? Is there any danger? I mean, obviously, right now, a lot of people look to nuclear power as better than the alternative. But of course, there's always an ongoing issue of where to store waste. There's a possibility of um, plant breakdowns. We've seen especially with older facilities or facilities that are on um, geographical fault lines and things like that. There's always these downsides. Is there anything of that sort in the context of nuclear fusion? Yeah, fusion is significantly safer. It's basically so hard to get it to work in the first place. If anything goes wrong, it just stops. Um, mm. It's a significant advantage. In terms of the waste, there is still some production of radioactive waste, but it's much shorter lived and easier to deal with um, than what you get from, from fission. What kind of uh, scientific partnerships or collaborations were needed to reach this point? Well, it's been literally 60 years of work in the field to, to get us to where we are now, and that's by people at Lawrence Livermore, where, where I work, um, our partners in the national laboratories and, and universities across the country, um, and also international partners. So we, we work with uh, people who are literally around the world. Um, it's a big, big team of people uh, that was necessary to, to make this work. What's the next uh, step? What's the next experiment you're hoping to get underway and, and be successful with? Yeah, always uh, better and better. So we're hoping to get more and more energy out and, and show that we can uh, really get this to be efficient. I mean, this does feel like a big deal, like a, like a big, you know, like you say, Wright Brothers moment where there's a paradigm shift in terms of our human understanding of what is possible. Um, in a field that is so important, energy production. And obviously this story did make the rounds. You saw a good deal of coverage of it. But I saw some people saying things like, gosh, this is like a humanity shifting event. Why aren't people discussing it in those terms? Do you think that that is an accurate description of what has happened? And what do you make of how the public as a whole has received this news? 
Well, it's certainly great to see the excitement. I mean, I think we were all uh, super excited too, um, even at one in the morning when the shot went off. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I think, uh, yeah, balancing the, again, to kind of come back to the Wright brothers, you know, it is a significant moment, I think, in human history. We can kind of get the plane off the ground for the first time. But there's still a lot of work to, to do, and then that this is not going to change things tomorrow. Um, so yeah. maintaining kind of that balance of, uh, you know, excitement about what we've what we've been able to show, and also a clear eye to the to the road forward, um, mm. I think is important. Well, thank you so much for joining us to talk about this very very exciting development. Yeah, thank you. Happy to be with you, Alex Elstrom. Thank you so much, and we'll have more rising right after this.